it's a group steeped in tradition. It always has the same message. We're a brotherhood and we all love to sing and we all come together for that common goal of unity through harmony. It has musical diversity in so many ways and it allows many different branches and assets for students to kind of find their own path and find what SMO means to them. It's uh, an opportunity for everyone to kind of come together over one common goal. It's not a documentary, it's a smockumentary. There we go. Singing Men of Ohio is Ohio University's premier men's glee ensemble. It's comprised of um, majors from all across campus, um, people from unique walks of life. It's a, this funky combination of a fraternal type brotherhood and a choir. The Singing Men of Ohio is the original men's glee club founded here at Ohio University. It's an organization that's flourished in its 30th year now. Um, it's one that promotes student uh, organization growth, um, student leadership, which is something that I love so much about the group. It has musical diversity in so many ways. Well, the Singing Men of Ohio is Ohio University's top tier um, men's glee club. Um, we are a men's course of anywhere from 50 to 90 individuals over the years. Um, the way I would describe the Singing Men of Ohio is it's a brotherhood and we all love to sing and we all come together for that common goal of unity through harmony as spelled out in our motto, Unitas Per Harmonium. A group of guys that just come together and share the same love for music as everyone else in the group does. By sharing this bond, we're able to be there for each other and be able to connect. I think what makes SMO so great is this combination of brotherhood and music. There's really nothing like getting to sing in harmony and then join together socially in harmony. I mean, getting to have like 90 of your best friends all together in one room to learn a song for, you know, a new piece or um, even get to go out and uh, have a good time together. I would describe the ensemble as uh, kind of just an open place for everybody, um, a place where everyone can kind of walk in and immediately have 60 to 80 best friends immediately. <laughs> I just remember um, random conversations on the phone with my father about a, a project that he was undertaking. He was inspired by the University of Michigan Men's Glee Club performance he had recently seen and thought, wow, this is what I want to bring to OU. And it started out small, but the passion and the drive and the dedication was never minimal at all. That men's choral tradition and men's choral sound, that was a passion of his. and. He brought it here and 30 years later, here we are, so. Yeah, I think, again, the gratitude that I feel toward this organization, um, that they remember and honor. And I am so grateful that people are aware of the, the depth and the gravity and how that can feed an organization and um, the respect for it. I'm, I'm really, truly, profoundly grateful for that. Um, the fact that, that he will never be forgotten and that he remains a part of this, um, even going on 19 years after his death, it's, it's unique and I'm grateful.
Race Mo Tour is the annual spring break tour that the Singing Men of Ohio take every single year. It's been really a tradition that we've done almost every year here in SMO. This year, for our 30th anniversary tour, we decided to go international and take the group to Canada. This was a really ambitious idea by our tour manager, Will Collins, and the rest of the exec board, as well as Dr. Bradley Naylor. And honestly, it was a really cool experience. Tour is one of, a, one of our greatest, uh, greatest weeks of the year. Uh, we spend all of, all of spring semester uh, leading up to tour practicing new pieces as well as old pieces in order to refine our musical skill and also working sometimes on some choreography. Tour to me is just the brotherhood in full force because we're bringing the music but we're also bringing the brotherhood and if you spend a week on a bus with a bunch of dudes you kind of get close to each other. My favorite tour stop would have to be Quebec. Being in Montreal, instead of being around the normal English language that you hear all over the U.S. and in most of Canada, I thought it was really cool to be able to see just French everywhere. I think what was a big highlight for me was definitely our Ottawa Masterclass. It was something I've never experienced so it was quite cool. My favorite tour stop that we performed in was Bowling Green. I thought that it was really cool that we did a um, collaboration with BG, especially on Brothers and Awakening. That's not something we get to do every year, and the, the crowd just loved both groups, so I think the energy was just immense. Um, and overall, it was a really great experience getting to go to another country. You know, this is Smo's, I believe, third time going abroad um, in 30 years, which is pretty awesome. Um, and I just, I can't think of anything better to do uh, with our 30th anniversary. You know, a lot of people make mistakes and you leave things places. You know, I, I leave my car keys at my house when, or something like that, or I, you know, leave a homework assignment somewhere. In this case, it was me leaving my passport in the scanner in Alden Fifth Floor Library. Oh, Cody. Um, Cody, our fearless leader, the little old president of the segment of Ohio, and my roommate. As I should have expected, I should have kept a closer tab on him. And we had a little system set up right before we left that said, check in with your passport, show these people your passport before you leave so we know you have it. We were doing practically everything we could to try to make sure everyone had their passports. And the one person who did not check in with us, Cody Pomeroy, and I turned to Dan as we were like packing up, I was like, hey, we didn't check Cody, did we? And he goes, no, but he's probably got it. He's president, right? So the morning started out to be, you know, let's, let's be proactive, let's get there early, let's, you know, be the president of SMO, you know, show some face. And then the second half of that day was a very anxiety-filled day because I had, in fact, only taken the copies, the paper copies, to Canada, and I had left the real passport in Athens, Ohio. She was able to overnight that passport to uh, the border um, just outside of Niagara Falls in Niagara Falls, New York. So we were able to get Cody's passport just in time to cross the border into Canada. Cody, 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 Cody. Let's make sure it's it. Someone else's passport. <laughs> Thank you for the morale uh, and emotional support through the last couple of days. It's been actually pretty stressful. Uh, I made some, some stops in Buffalo to plan that trip out in case uh, this didn't happen. Uh, thank you for your support again, uh, Dr. Naylor. You got it. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, guys. All right. Let's hear it for Cody. You'll have that. Alumni Weekend is a weekend we throw for our alumni to come back and sing with us. This year was really special because it was our 30th anniversary, so it was a big concert for us. We had over 60 people who were alumni attending, 
which is the highest number we've ever had. Well, alumni weekend is when we have all of our alumni come back and um, sing for a weekend with the Singing Men of Ohio just to uh, be reconnected with the group. I think that it's um, great for alumni to come back um, to see their littles, grand littles, great grand littles and so forth still in this group and have a link to the group. It's an opportunity for um, older members, alumni to come back, get to see what the group looks like now, um, meet new members and continue the brotherhood beyond their graduation. Uh, what made this year really special from my standpoint was having Katrina as a come back for our 30th anniversary and conduct us and not only conduct us but also sing with us. She is a wonderful woman. She did a wonderful job working with us, and she's so much fun. There was a time when she was talking about the quest on ending, a song that means a lot to this group and means a lot to her father. She talked about her favorite line in the song, uh, one equal temper of heroic hearts, which happened to be my favorite line in the song. I think that it was amazing to meet somebody who had that relationship with somebody who we talk about and we deem so highly in our group. And I think that she, um, holds the family name very well. Being in that position that my father was in, physically and emotionally, in front of this group, um, I, I can't tell you how close I feel to him right now. Um, and every time I think about Smo, there's just this, you know, mid immediate vision of my dad's face and image. I'm doing what he did. He never pushed that. He never forced that. Um, in fact, I remember a conversation where he said, I don't want you to do this just because I did. I said, I'm not. You know, I, and I never thought I couldn't do it. And I, I'm in this, the same position as a voice professor and a music educator. And I think that the confidence that was instilled in me in part came from his position on the podium in, in front of Singing Men of Ohio and that um, continuous drive for excellence. I've inherited that and I'm grateful. She has been a part of us since the beginning, but for her to come back and just see what we've become and be not only happy but proud of us and wanting us to keep doing what we're doing it was just really nice. Elizabeth does so much for this group. She is first and foremost our accompanist, so she plays piano for us in three rehearsals a week, sometimes in sectionals. She is crazy enough to come on tour across the country and this year up into Canada for seven days on a bus. I guess basically just the standard job description is she is just the grad uh, accompanist. That's her job. Um, but then like what does she really do for SMO? She's kind of the glue that holds all of us together. She's, you know, we can't do any of the stuff that we do without her. Elizabeth really has has furthered our, our mission as a musical ensemble, I think, and brought the brotherhood and musical aspect even closer this year. We see her as um, our accompanist and our friend, um, our friend in music making. Um, I see her as one of the best people I've met so far in my undergraduate career. Um, and I'm so thankful that I get to make music with her and I'm gonna miss her very much next year. I'm actually really upset. She's been a great collaborative uh, pianist and a great person to get to know. I've gotten to know her throughout my time in the School of Music and a time in SMO. And she is such a wonderful person. So at first I was thinking it was just gonna be like something that I check off my list, you know, did this on a Monday, did this on a Wednesday, did this on a Friday, repeat. Um, and, you know, just a way for me to get more exposure to choral music and, you know, to have the mentorship of Dr. Naylor and work under his direction. And then I started to get to know the guys more and friendships started blossoming and uh, becoming more crazy and, um, then it just like added a whole nother meaning to being a part of SMO and like being in the group. 
The friends that I've made in this group, both this year and last year, are people that I'm not going to lose touch with after I leave in a couple weeks or um, after graduation. And um, I like how like it's referred to as a brotherhood. I'm like the single sister maybe, <laughs> but I have like, sometimes I'm the younger sister and you know, the guys take care of me. I'm also like really good friends with people and um, there's a level of professionalism, sure, but there's also like a loving relationship too. I guess if I could just speak like directly to her, I would say stop doubting yourself. Be be confident. Don't doubt yourself anymore. We always hear you say, um, oh, I, I messed up this note or this note or this note. But you know what? The little F sharp that you miss uh, in the song, that doesn't matter. You are an incredible, incredibly talented musician and person. And you're going to go super far, super, super far in life. Miss Jackson, I'm really glad that uh, we kind of got to get as close as we did this year. Um, it's real sad to see you go. I know we've both had our own like emotional trips on the the SMO stage, everything like that. You know, um, I know she's gonna do great wherever she goes, and uh, I'd hope she could come back to SMO at some point, maybe during an alumni weekend and perform with us again. It's something I would really enjoy. Um, Elizabeth, I wish you all the best. You're an incredible musician, and I think that. The world is better for having you in it. I mean, I'm very, I'm, I'm proud of her. I'm proud of what she's accomplished here at Ohio University. But you know, I think it's her time to move on and, and do bigger and better things. So, I wish her well in her future endeavors. You know, whether that be musical or anything that she sets her mind to. So I know she's going to do amazing things, and you know, Smo will be, um, she will be Smo's sweetheart forever. <laughs>